Welcome to the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, founder of the Reiki Business Collective and creator of the Build Your Reiki Business Program, sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Greetings, welcome, and thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, and I am grateful to have you here. So thank you so much. In this episode, we're talking about artificial intelligence. AI for your Reiki business. Now, AI is a controversial topic right now, of course, as anything that is new. And as with anything that is new, it is also a hot topic right now. And so uh, there are indeed Reiki businesses who are using uh AI for their Reiki business. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, about the possibilities and about how you may or may not want to use artificial intelligence for your Reiki business. So let's first define what I mean when I'm talking about artificial intelligence, because we have to admit that there are all different kinds of artificial intelligences out there. You know, things like um, the sensors on our uh, outdoor lights when we come home at night that automatically come on. You know, we don't think of that as artificial intelligence, but um, in in a way, it truly is. So I'm not talking about um, light sensors in this episode. I'm talking, of course, about things like ChatGPT, Bard, Jasper, and those kinds of AI tools. The AI that the world is all abuzz with right now about um, the tools that we can use to uh, simplify our lives in terms of writing and in terms of brainstorming and idea generation and et cetera, et cetera. So what is the deal with these uh, artificial intelligences. <laughs> well, you know, right now, when it comes to artificial intelligence, we are in the more rudimentary stages. And for some of us, when we use something like chat GBT, we may think, well, there's nothing rudimentary about this at all. This is pretty freaking amazing. And yet at the same time, we have to acknowledge that as far as the evolution of artificial intelligence and where it is going, um, we are in its infancy. Of course, even if we take into consideration the long history of artificial intelligence, if we expand our notion of artificial intelligence. So, you know, Alexa and Siri have been around for a while, and those are a form of artificial intelligence as well. But um, it really, to me, is is almost like if you are old enough to remember, and I don't know about you, but I sure am old enough to remember a time before the internet. <laughs> and when the internet was uh, just in its infancy, and you know, when you had dial up and uh, you had to wait until the dial uh, completed to get connected, and then you had to put a note on the phone that said, do not use on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> or if someone picked up the phone, then you lost your internet connection. Um, you know, it's so funny to think about, isn't it, how far we've come since those days. And, you know, those days uh, are a part of my lifetime and probably a part of your lifetime as well. You know, the early 90s and to, into the mid 90s. And so, um, we can think, I think, of uh, artificial intelligence in those kinds of ways. You know, perhaps we are in the dial-up phase of artificial intelligence right now. What I do believe is that artificial intelligence will be so big that we will not be able to ignore it. And that indeed it is going to have far-reaching effects. Now, 
We can say at this point, well, it's just not a good thing. It's a dangerous thing. It's a scary thing, this artificial intelligence. We just don't know what it can do. Well, yes, and the same could have been said and probably was said about the internet back in the early 90s. I mean, I don't remember. I was, you know, a a kid. I was a teenager um, at that time, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Um, But my guess is that there were probably some existential discussions about the internet at that time as there are about artificial intelligence now. And so all of this to say that we don't know what the future holds for this tool, but if it's anything like the internet, it is going to completely change our lives. Because I don't know about you, but the internet has completely changed my life. You know, my life would be completely different if the internet never existed and you probably could say the same thing. At the very least, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. (laughs) And so let's admit that that piece of technology, that technology has had such far-reaching effects. And so too will AI as it evolves and develops. Again, I'm not here to argue for good or ill. Um, Any tool is simply a tool and it's how we use it. And so some might say that the internet um, has degraded society and some might say that it has lifted society up. It's a tool and it's all about how we use the tool. And so it's important for us to remember that artificial intelligence is itself a tool. And what really matters is how we use the tool. The tool itself is neutral. It's what we do with the tool that matters. And so too it is with artificial intelligence in our Reiki business. And so Artificial intelligence, things like ChatGPT, which I'm positive that you have heard of by now, you know, you can get uh, a ChatGPT account for free. Um, I will say that it took me a little bit of time to jump onto ChatGPT because they wanted your phone number, and I didn't like that. (laughs) I did not like that idea. Um, And so uh, I I did not uh, give ChatGPT a try at first, and I went instead with Bard, which does not ask for your phone number, except it is a Google product, and Google does have my phone number, so there you go. (laughs) Um, But um, ChatGPT is um, a, uh, a program in which you can chat. It, it's designed um, as a responsive text kind of a tool in which you talk to it. You can chat with it and it will chat back to you. So it will respond back to you in a, a, a conversation-oriented kind of way. Same thing with Bard. It will do the same thing as well. Now, Bard, I won't talk uh, about the um, the back end too much, but they actually are two different. They run on uh, two. Uh, they they work in in two different ways in terms of the back end and the technology. But essentially, they do the same thing, in which you ask it a question ask it to do something for you, and it will spit out an answer. That answer isn't always accurate. And these products are, of course, still being refined. But it will give you uh, a something as a response that you can hopefully, depending upon your question and what you need it for, use. So I'll talk about my experience in using these tools in my Reiki business. So I started with Bard. And um, my main reason for wanting to give AI a try was to take things like my YouTube transcripts and cut out all of the ums and uhs and turn them into um, nice readable text that I could then uh, alter and use for posts or blog articles or what have you. And one of the things that's nice about Bard is that it is um, up to date. 
chat GPT only has the capacity to know what's going on in the world up to 2021. So if you ask it a more current kind of a question or need more um, current information, it can't handle that. It's only uh, up to 2021 that it, that it has capacity. But BARD um, does not have that limitation. And so BARD can take a YouTube video um, and pull from it and summarize it. It can also take a website. So you can say, here's my website. Um, tell me about uh, what's on this website. And it will summarize what's on the site. So BARD can do that more advanced kind of um, task. But BARD has its limitations too. So for instance, I'll take one of my YouTube videos and I'll plug it into BARD and I'll say, BARD, please summarize this video for me. Now, I, you know, you can take a transcript directly from YouTube. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> So I, of course, already have access to my own YouTube transcripts, but just curious to see what Bard is going to do with them. And so um, what Bard actually often says to me is, great, here is a summary of this video, and it names a video that is not the link I gave it, not my video, not a video I have ever heard of. Sometimes it's not even related at all. <laughs> and then I say, no, Bard. That's the wrong video. This video, give it the link again. My apologies. And then it gives me um, a response that you are correct. Yes, that is the wrong video. Here is the video you asked for. No, still not the right video, Bard. <laughs> So BARD absolutely does have its own limitations, and um, Google is still working on it for sure. <laughs> um, but so that was uh, the way in which I really envisioned using um, AI in my own Reiki business. You know, the truth is I write all of my own stuff. I always have, and I plan to as well. Because uh, to me, I believe it is important for us to write our own stuff. Even if we don't feel that we're the best writer, what really matters is that we are putting our own ideas, our own thoughts, our own energy out there in order to attract clients and potential clients, students, and people who resonate with what we have to say. And if we are sharing general text, then there's no heart in that. There's no energy in that. And I don't know about you, but I can kind of feel it. <laughs> um, at least, uh, at least it, it seems to me. Now, I do think that, of course, the tools will get better. They will get better. They will get better. Um, and uh, for me, I still will do my own writing, and uh, that is important to me. I think also um, when it comes to this idea of doing our own writing and showing up with our own energy and maybe people being afraid that, well, I'm not a good writer. Well, if you write, you're going to get better. So if you do something, you're going to get better at it. And you might be thinking, well, I'd rather spend that time offering Reiki. I'd rather spend that time, you know, doing the, the fun things in my Reiki business. Yes, I can understand that. And I think that uh, showing up with our own energy in our own writing is important. And so what I believe is that even if you're not spitting out um, a lot of writing, so you're not going for quantity, but rather going for quality, that's what matters. So rather than having ChatGPT or Bard spit out a bunch of articles for you that you can post that really have none of you in them, then that is actually less of a good use of your time than writing one article that is 
heartfelt and you and your voice, your experiences. And so if you can spend the time writing one article on your own versus have chat GPT spit 10 out for you that are generic, sometimes quite frankly, dull, um, and, um, impersonal, then I think that you're going to be able, I think that you're going to be using your time better if you write that one article, that one good solid article about your own experiences, your own thoughts, your own tips and tricks from your own life. And so I do just want to mention that. I'll say more about that in a minute, but first I want to get to my use of chat GPT. So I got frustrated with Bard. <laughs> By the way, I did have Bard uh, do some things for me and summarize some things. So then what I did was I took the transcript because of course I have access to my YouTube transcripts, copied it and pasted it and said, okay, Bard, without bringing in any outside information, so don't add anything to this. Please summarize this text in paragraph form. And Bard just gave me a bunch of bullet points, brought in some ideas. They were good ideas, but they were not mine. <laughs> I thought, hmm, that's a good idea, but that's not, that's not in the video, or at least I don't remember that it was in the video. And so I thought this isn't, this isn't what I want. I don't want outside stuff coming in. Uh, to my text. I just want you to be using the text that I'm supplying you with and not going outside uh, and searching other resources for it. So then I used chat GPT. I broke down and, and gave them my phone number <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tried the same tasks with chat GPT. And I will say that chat GPT did a better job of sticking with um, my own information, my own text, my own stuff. And um, of course, ChatGPT cannot pull from a YouTube video uh, and, uh, and can't do that kind of advanced thing that Bard can. But I, what I found in my uh, experience was that generally ChatGPT is, it does a better job uh, of uh, asking for what you need. I did also ask Bard to write code for a, a, something on my website, and it did spit that out at me. Um, it also wasn't exactly what I wanted, so I kept asking it, no, Bard, can you change this? Can you change this? Can you change this? And it was able to eventually give me exactly what I needed. So that is actually really cool that these programs can write code for you as well. You just say, hey, I need this for my website. I, uh, can you write a code for it? And it can oftentimes spit that out. Whether or not it's going to work on the first try is another thing. But um, so I did find that ChatGPT does work better. And I'll also say that, you know, after my initial trying them out and seeing what it was all about, um, I haven't really used them much at all. Uh, I, you know, I have actually so much content in my Reiki business that I don't, I don't need some artificial intelligence to generate content for me, nor frankly do I want that. I want to be generating my own content for all of the reasons that I listed previously. Um, but, uh, I don't, I don't need, uh, any artificial intelligence to generate content for me. Um, and, uh, I do not then really use it much in my Reiki business now, nor do I, uh, envision that I will, but it is great for things like idea generation. And so let's say that you want to know, okay, what are some ways that I can market my Reiki business? You can throw in some information and you will get some ideas. So it's great for idea generation. It is great for um, brainstorming. It is great as a starting point. But here's the thing with taking chat 
GPT or BARD or Jasper or any other writing. Jasper, by the way, is specifically for copywriting. So I haven't used it. It's a paid service. And if I'm hardly using free BARD and chat GPT, why would I pay for a service uh, like Jasper when I write all of my own stuff? And I prefer that. But the thing is that if you take what chat GPT spits out for you. So let's say that you say to chat GPT, write me a 500 word article on the benefits of Reiki. It spits it out for you and you copy and paste that onto your website. Well, as a matter of fact, Google doesn't like that. So Google actually will downgrade your website if it finds a lot of AI generated content on it. So Google um, favors original content over AI generated content. And so what that means is that if you use ChatGPT to spit out a bunch of articles for you and post them on your website, hoping that you're going to boost your SEO, it's actually going to have a negative impact on your ranking. So just be aware of that. I will also say that there are actually also services out there that will take AI generated content and make it sound like it isn't AI generated content in order to pass AI tests. So yes, there are programs that will give a range of whether or not this content is AI generated. And so you can feed, for instance, a blog post into it and it will spit out, okay, this uh, content is, you know, like 70% AI. And what that 70% means is that the program is 70% sure that this content is AI generated. So there are all kinds of tools like that. And then there are tools to re- write the AI content so that it passes AI filter tests like that. Well, you know, once you run your, um, your article, your AI generated article through all of that and took the time to do that, you might as well have just written a few things yourself. <laughs> At least that's my opinion. Um, so I'm not saying don't use AI for your Reiki business. It's a tool and it really depends upon how we use it. And yes, I do believe that it can benefit your Reiki business. At the same time, I think that if you are envisioning using it as a way to replace the you in your Reiki business with the writing, I don't think that's the best use of the tool because then who is replacing you in the Reiki sessions? If you are the one who is putting your name on the content that you are quote unquote writing on your website and showing up in a way that says, this is me, although I didn't write a word of this, how are you showing up in your Reiki sessions? How are you showing up with clients? And are you going to want to have some other form of artificial intelligence take care of that aspect of the business for you as well. You know, in our Reiki business, we're good at some things, we're not good at others. And yes, indeed, we can outsource things. And that can be very helpful. But I think that if we post an article on our website and put our own name to it, then we indeed want to be showing up authentically in that way and in our sessions as well. If you're not showing up authentically on your website blog, then are you showing up authentically in your sessions? And I think that's simply a question that we all have to ask ourselves and for our own Reiki business. And so I just want to encourage that. I also want to share with you just a couple of examples of some things that AI did send to me as things uh, that um, 
I could use to uh, market. So I was very curious, okay, Bard, um, write me uh, an email to promote the Build Your Reiki Business program. So I told Bard about the program, and uh, this is what it spit out to me. Subject line, are you ready to start your Reiki business? Hi, recipient name. Do you dream of starting your own Reiki business, of ditching the nine to five and being your own boss, of helping others with Reiki and making a difference in the world? If so, I have great news for you. I've created a program that will show you how to start your own Reiki business from the ground up. And then it goes on to say, it's called build your Reiki business. <laughs> and you know, is this terrible? No, it's not terrible. It's actually not as bad as I expected. Um, could I do better? Yes, I could. Um, and if I couldn't, is this a good starting point? Yes, it is. But is it the best ending point? No, it's not. Because we can do better. Because what this doesn't do is bring heart. And what this doesn't do is bring soul. And what this definitely doesn't do, everyone, is bring Reiki. There's no Reiki in this. And so we're bringing the Reiki to our Reiki business. So yes, we can use these tools to help us. We can use these tools to uh, get us started and to supplement our own stuff that we're putting out. And at the end of the day, it doesn't have our heart, it doesn't have our soul, and it doesn't have Reiki. We can bring the heart and the soul, just like we bring the heart and the soul to our sessions, just like we bring the heart and the soul to our work with clients. And so let's bring it to our writing and to our use of AI tools as well. As always, you can get the free Reiki Biz Kit at standingstoneshealing.com slash Reiki Biz Kit. And of course, as always, you can check out the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Yes, I wrote everything on that website myself. <laughs> <laughs> no help from Bard or Chat GPT at all. So I'm sending so many blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business and to AI for your Reiki business, no matter how you choose to use it or not use it. Thanks for tuning in to the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend. Learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business.